students, welcome to Guamdevi Vikas Peer Science College Muthoro online classes. In our today's class, we will see the next unit, which is the school boy. The school boy is the second unit, and this is a poem written by William Blake. Before we could go to the poem, let us get a brief introduction of the great poet called William Blake. The birth year of William Blake is 1757. The birth year of William Blake is 1757 means was the writer of 18th century. And William Blake is a poet as well as a painter. He wrote poems and also he was a great painter. And birthplace of William Blake is Sohio. Sohio is the city of United States. And William Blake had little formal education. Little formal education means he had no education of formal schools. Yeah, William Blake had little formal education means he had no education from any formal schools. Which means he did not go to school to get graduation. So here it is given. He had little formal education. This reason only had made him to write this poem, The School Boy. When we study the poem, we will come to know that yes, William Blake had not gone to school. It means he had no education of formal schooling. But was apprenticed to James Messiah who was an eminent engraver. But William Blake had great interest in art. He had his great interest in painting. So his father and mother encouraged him to become an artist. By the help of his parents, he was taken to the great, the meaning of eminent is great, famous, popular. He was taken to the great or famous engraver. The meaning of engraver is Kettani Karanta Hirtivina. James Messiah, he was an eminent engraver and William Blake was taken to him. And by seeing the art of William Blake's, James Messiah made William Blake as his apprentice. The meaning of apprentice is learner born to employer for a specified term. Under duty born employee and third me now. Sorry, learner born employee and third me. Ali in a gift apprentice tandre. Kalasudar Jateke, Avaru Kaliyuvaka Kelavandu, Shilikalana, Atava paintings Kalana, Madi Dare, Avu Kalige, Yen Matayitru, Sambadavanu Kuda, Nirtaitru. William Blake was so fine artist that. James Versailles was one of the famous engraver of U.S. made him his apprentice. And then he was sent to Royal Academy to exhibit his talent of painting. 
after getting training under the guidance of James Messiah, he was sent to Royal Academy to exhibit his arts and his famous art as a painter is invention to the book of Job. It's one of the famous books written by James Messiah as an artist or painter. As an artist or painter, his finest work is inventions to the book of Job. In this book, we could see many beautiful arts of or paintings of William Blake. Even the Pustak Dali now William Blake and Sakasto Chitra Kalakarana Nami Marbodu, Lord Bodu. That was famous. He was in his painting skill and songs of innocence, marriage of heaven and hell, songs of experience, poetical sketches. These are his collections of his collections of poetry as what a poet. As a painter, his finest work for painting is inventions to the book of Job. And being a poet, his collections of poetry. Collections of poetry and Kavana Sankalana Galu and the Hirtibi Kandadal. Vabba Kaviyagi Avana Kavana Sankalana Galu Yamagi Tupankandre. Poetical sketches which he wrote in the year 1783. Songs of innocence which he wrote in. 1789 Marriage of Heaven and Hell which he wrote in 1790 Songs of Experience which he wrote in the year 1794 So these all are the collections of poetry of William Blake's which he contributed to the literature as a poet and the schoolboy poem is the schoolboy poem is a lyric lyric emotional verse bhava gita emotional song of her the schoolboy poem is a lyric. It is the Bhava Gita which is extracted from the songs of experience. The songs of experience which he wrote in the year 17. 94. The school boy poem and the songs of experience. And we lost such a great poet and the painter. In the year in the year 1827. So now, such a great poet, how he has elaborated his poem, the school boy. Through the poem, we will see. In this poem, the poet expresses the emotional feelings of the schoolboy about the formal schooling. 
the poet is not agonist with the formal schooling, but the poet feels that formal schooling for young children or the little ones hinders or curbs their development. How he expresses this notion of thought through the stanzas of the poem, we will see. Now let us start the poem, The School Boy. So let us start the poem, The School Boy, which is the second unit written by William Blake. I love to rise in a summer morn. This is a very important line from which you will be asked one more question. In this line, the pronoun I is very important. In this line, the pronoun I is very important will be asked for one mark. So here, the poem begins with the personal pronoun I. I love to rise in a summer morn. Whom does this I refer to? That should be known, na? So here, I refers to the speaker. Who is the speaker? Here the speaker is who? The school boy. I in the poem refers to the school boy. Should be remembered. Will be asked for one mass. The question will be like this. Whom does I in the poem the school boy refer to? For that question you have to answer the school boy is referred to I or else I refers to the school boy. So here in this poem the speaker is who? The school boy. Wherever there comes I to whom you have to imagine you have to imagine the small school boy. Here the school boy, he says, what he says? I love to rise in a summer morn. The school boy, he loves, he loves very much to be a riser. Rise, get up. To be got up early. In which morn? In the summer morn. In the summer season, the school boy, the small school boy, he loves to get up early. He says, in next line, let us see what he wants to say. When the birds sing on every tree, in the summer morning, almost all the birds from the tree tree tops, they sing. So here the school boy says that he loves to get up early in a summer morn when the birds sing on every tree. When the birds in the early morning start singing their song sitting on every tree. The school boy tempts like getting up early. Next time let us see what he wants to say. The distant huntsman winds his heart. Even in the summer morn, the school boy hears what? The distant huntsman's winding his horn. The hunters, when they set off their journey for hunting, they even take a horn along with them. And when they go or when they enter in the forest, they start blowing the horn. With the music of that horn, 
some animals like deer they are fond of music to listen the music what they do they come towards the hunter when they come the hunter he hunts he is prey this is what a kind of traditional which the hunters they follow so when they early in the morning when they set off their journey for hunting they take horn with them and when they enter the forest they horn they wind their horn the meaning of wind here is wind here is blow blow ಊದುವುದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ನಾವು ಬೇಟೆಗಾರ ಯಾವಾಗ ಬೇಟೆಗೆ ಸಿದ್ಧತೆಯಾಗಿ ಇನ್ನೇನ್ ಕಾಡ್ ಒಳಗ್ ಹೋಗ್ತಾನಲ್ಲ ಅವಾಗ ಅವನ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನ ಬೇಟೆ ಸುಮ್ನೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಬೇಟೆ ಆಡೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅವನ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನ ಅವನ್ ಹತ್ರ ಒಂದು ಹಾರ್ನ್ ಇರುತ್ತ ಅದನ್ನ ಊದುತ್ತಾ ಬೇಟೆಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಣಿಗಳನ್ನ ಹಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಹುಡುಕ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತಾನ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಬಾಯ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ರೂಮ್ in the summer morn he hears the horn of distant huntsman distant far a bit far away swalpa doorudinda avunige enagutta a huntsman thana horn anna wind madodu kelsutte to listen that beautiful horns sound of hunters the school boy wants to get up early in a summer morn he says in next time what let us see what wants to highlight and the sky now sings with me and when he gets up and starts tuning from his bed he even could hear the tune of sky now which is mixing its tune with the school boy i hope you know the meaning of skylark if not brown colored bird just like what just like a sparrow gubbi tara vandu kandu bannada hakki irutte ಅದು ಫಾರಿನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಅ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮರ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಓ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಕಂಪನಿ ಹಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ಲೇಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಓ ಮೈ ಗಾಡ್ ದ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆಫ್ skylax which sings with me he is a very sweet company he exclaims this is an important line will be asked for one mark again whom does the sweet company refer to in the poem and the prashna varute the sweet company refers to the answer of your should be the skylark so in this stanza the school boy he says that he loves to rise early in a summer morn when he hears the songs of birds on every tree and when he hears the distant distant huntsman's horn sound which he wins and he laughs singing with whom the skylark the company of skylark is a sweet company he exclaims so in this first stanza we will see that the school boy loves to get up early not to go to school but to enjoy with whom with the nature
He wanted to enjoy with the songs of birds. He wanted to enjoy himself with the song of skylarks. He wants to enjoy the sound of huntsman, which comes early in the morning. So here, the schoolboy wants to know the environment which is surrounded to him. What is plant? What is the color of the plant? What is the soil? What is the sky? What is the earth? The stars? The sun? The moon? In which they have to live? These all things must be known to the young children before they are sent to the school. The same emotional feelings in this stanza the schoolboy is exhibiting. He wants to be in the nature in the morning, in summer season, because he enjoys the company of natures. In next stanza, let us see what happens to the school boy. But to go to school on a summer morn. See, here he, but the enemy of the young school boy. The first line of second stanza is, but to go to school on a summer morn. But when the school boy, he remembers that he had to go to school. Let us see what happens in next line. Oh, it drives all joy away. He exclaims very sadly by saying, Oh, whatever joys had come in me went away from me. Joy, joy, happiness, happiness, santosha. Nanali in Yetakshna Bandito. All joy went away from me. He says, Well, when he remembered that he had to go to where? The school in which the children are made to be sit in four walls. Let us see next lines what he wants to say. Under approval, I outward. This line is a metaphor is a metaphor is a metaphor used for whom used for school under approval i outward is a metaphor used for the I hope you all remember the figure of speech called metaphor. Metaphor and Rehavu Gotigo than Kodini Ilan Tandre. Metaphor is a figure of speech in which we treat two things as what? One. Yerdu was to go and one day. Yerdu was to go and a day and heady. Now, from our Bekandra, your figure of speech is Martini. We use metaphor figure of speech. So here, under a cruel I outward means the school. This means the school, the school means this. Both are same, is a metaphor. My sur huli andre tipu sultana, tipu sultan andre ne? My sur huli. Idu kana mena takariti di, rupa kalam kana takariti di kana nali, adane English nali what we call? We call as. So here the school boy says under a cruel eye outward means under the formal schooling or in the school where the children are sitting in four walls says he the little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. Under the cruel light 
outward or in the school the little ones the little ones small children meaning of little ones is small children in the school the small children they spend the their day how he says in sighing and this way the meaning of sighing is taking a long breath in care of something ಜೋರಾಗಿ ನಿಟ್ಟುಸಿರನ್ನ ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವೇನಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಬ್ರೀದ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಮೇಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ಹ್ಯಾಪಿಲಿ So here the school boy says in the school the small children they spend their entire in taking a long breath of getting afraid of something or they spend their day sadly boldly he expresses ah then at times i dropping sit when he remembers the the, the 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 emotional feelings of the little ones in the school suddenly on his bed he sits drooping the meaning of drooping is leaning one's head downwards in sadness ಮಂಚಿಗೆ ಬೇಜಾರಾಗಿ ಮಂಕ್ ಆಗಿ ತಲೆ ಕೆಳಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕುತ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಕಾಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಡ್ರೂಪಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಸಡನ್ಲಿ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಹೀ ಲೀನ್ಸ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಡೌನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ಇನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ನರ್ವಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ comes to know that he had to go to school on a summer morn now in next stanza let us see what else he wants to express his emotions around the formal schooling and spend many an anxious hour and there on his bed he starts spending many an anxious hour here the meaning of anxious hour is fearsome aspects of school boy here the school boy gets nervous becomes afraid of school and whatever joy had come in him when he got up to enjoy the nature all gets away from him when he remembers the school and he starts spending his fearful hour tabaka kondanta ha time anna avan en malik shuru martana he starts spending sitting on his bed nor in my book can i take delight nor sit in learning's bower the school boy emotionally sadly he says he had no interest or happiness in his books he say he says nor in my book can i take delight the school boy says he couldn't take any delight delight happiness from what from his books not sitting learning bower sitting in learning bower is sitting inside the school or classroom 
Learning's power is again what? The school here. The school boy had no interest in the books of schools and he even had no interest to be sit in the class of his schools. He says he couldn't take any delight from his books and he even couldn't take any delight sitting in learning subhavar means sitting in school. Next line let us see what he says. Also with a dreary shower or bearing. The meaning of or means bearing. The school aspects are completely bearing through with what dreary shower. Dreary shower means tiresome aspects of the school boy. The school bears what? The tiresome aspects like reading, writing, sitting in one place, listening to the teacher's teaching, doing homework, doing classwork, respecting oneself, not doing any irrespective kind of mannerisms inside the classroom or inside the school campus. These all are tiresome aspects of whose? The school boys. So in this stanza, he says, he spends many an anxious hour when he remembers that he had to go to school. He starts spending his tiresome hour, fearful hour because he takes no delight from the book and he even had no delight sitting in the learning's bower because learning's bower is bearing with what? The tiresome aspects. No liberty at all. You might have seen the small children of play home, LKG and UKG. They are always are scolded by either the teachers or else from the parents. If they go to the school, the teachers make them to be sit in one place and will ask them to do the things which they wanted them to be done. And when they go to home, they, they are loaded with full of what? Homework. And the parents, they do not allow the children to be mingled themselves with the nature. They are asked to do the homework. So, the school boy, he starts spending a spacious hour as he has no happiness either in books or in school. Because he feels that the school bears with the tiresome aspects. It's a kind of taking freedom of the small children. This is what the schoolboy he feels. His emotional feelings. In this third stanza, what all emotional feelings comes in him. In next class, we will see with remaining three stanzas. Thank you and see you in next class.